So we are here, down in Wanstead. We're going to follow the river roading for a short while and then we're going to turn off towards Chigwell. It's a wet and windy Sunday afternoon. Perfect for walking, perfect for walking. It's the 1st of November today. And actually I've just found myself down in Wanstead it's about three o'clock just after three. Sunset today is at 4.45. I just really fancy taking a walk up to Chigwell. Chigger's Well or Cheeker's Well, I'm not sure. But it's the well of some sort of old Anglo-Saxon warrior, I think, is where the name comes from. It's always seemed like quite a mystical place for me. And I don't think it really features in any of my videos on here, not my recent ones anyway. So I'm just um, wandering through this little bit of uh, open space in the Roding Valley here. Not entirely sure <laughs> quite where this footpath leads, but um, it's all good anyway, wherever it leads. So I'm going to follow the river roading for a short distance and then turn up towards Chigwell. And hopefully we'll get to Chigwell for sunset because there are some amazing views from up there. Chigwell Spring is mentioned in Old London's Spas, Baths and Wells by Septimus Sunderland, published in 1915. At Chigwell Epping Forest, there was a spring in Saxon days, as evidenced by the derivation meaning King's Well. But with the medicinal spring at Chigwell Row, with purgative properties, discovered towards the end of the 17th century, behind the windmill among the trees, cannot claim any connection with the ancient spring. The waters were puffed by a Dr. Freewin in the 18th century and attained a certain degree of popularity. It started raining moderately heavily, so it's gonna be another one of those days where the camera's coming in and out of my jacket, but it won't inhibit the enjoyment of this walk. Here we are, onto the river roading now, and underneath this majestic bridge here. This looks like some kind of macabre tribute to the, uh, the river god of the roading. Or it could be a leftover from last night's Halloween, I guess. So we'll just go up and over. Well, it's always been one of my favourite river roading bridges because that's the side of the, the river we need to be on to depart for uh, Chigwell. Slight change of plan, actually. I think I'll just head up here to Roading Lane South. It's quite an intriguing road that isn't really featured on any videos. And we've walked along the roading a million times along here. One of those walks where matching my mental map of the area where we're heading to around Chigwell and the places I'd like to go doesn't quite line up with the uh, Ordnance Survey map. So it's going to be interesting now, I think I'm going to go on memory to uh, navigate us on this walk today. I have the map though, don't worry. I love this pumping station here on the banks of the roading. This is really one of the great buildings of East London. This is the terminus point of the 366 bus. Not a bus I could say that I've caught before. The terminus points of buses are always kind of very particular, kind of ambiguous spaces, quite loaded with mystery. Just look at the names on this bus route. South Park Road, Eton Road, Loxford School of Science and Technology, Beckton Triangle Retail Park, Galleons Reach, Armada Point, Cyprus, Savage Gardens. I remember in sort of my early years of London, one of the things I would sometimes do if I'd had a late night, or maybe I'd stayed over at someone's house and I found myself in a different part of London, I would catch the first bus that came along 
and ride it to its terminus. And I felt that there was something about the end points of bus routes that could tell me something about London that I couldn't find out in any other way. This is a classic Edgeland landscape. Aside from the terminus point of the bus down there, we have a, I think that's a private hospital there, beneath the pylons, and we have a cemetery here. There's a massive recycling depot. All the kind of coders of the Edgeland. These are views that you don't get when you walk along the roading, which is what I usually do along here. This is interesting, I've not seen this substation before. I'd forgotten just how great a walk this is. You've got this intriguing industrial estate here and the massive electricity substation. I always feel spaces like this is like the behind the scenes view of the city. This is BTS London. I kind of love buildings like this. I don't know quite why, because I suppose a lot of people find them sort of ugly, but something beautiful about them. Maybe it's because they're really symmetrical. Somehow got to get across this monster road here towards the Toby Carvery. How do you do that? All my prayers have been answered. We've got a subway. Can't beat a good underpass. Classic Toby Carberry, a real feature of the outer suburbs. As I was walking past that industrial estate, this lady saw me filming and she came over to speak to me to tell me that they converted one of the old industrial units in there into temporary housing. And she said she could feel the impact of living beneath the pylons. It was kind of sapping her energy. Right, a long roading lane north now. Got Hospital Hill Wood just up there. You can see the towers of the old notorious Claybury Hospital poking above the tree line. There's a video on my channel of a walk up there. The hospital is now a quite exclusive gated community, of course. I'll link to that video below. The Claybury estate was a medieval manor that at one point was held by Barking Abbey. In 1597 it was visited by Elizabeth I, which is not that unusual for large estates in the area to be honest with you. It was sold to the County of Middlesex in 1887 to build an asylum, and ownership was transferred to the London County Council in 1893. It became quite a notorious psychiatric hospital until it was closed in the late 1990s. It's now a luxury gated community called Repton Park. It's, uh, it's four o'clock and it's really quite dark and grim now. So I don't think we'll get much of a sunset from up at Chigwell. But I'm gonna push on anyway and keep going. So I imagine this walk will, uh, will end in the dark. This looks like a new cemetery, which is not something I can say I've seen very often. second allotment of the day. Obviously you find allotments near rivers. The river roading is just on the other side of these allotments. That's the entrance to the woods there. If I had more time I would take that detour but I've got to keep ploughing on towards Chigwell. So we've come over the crest of that hill there. We're just looking down into the roading valley. It's a really majestic view.
Jigwell became famous for its medicinal springs. There were some hotels that sprang up around the springs. So you have to forgive me for that. So you can imagine that people would have been travelling out here from London in their, in their horse and cart, dressed in their finery for a day to take the waters at the medicinal springs of Chigwell. I love this little parade of shops here at Woodford Bridge. I've often uh, stopped here for sustenance on various walks. I'll just be passing through today. It does look, however, like they have their Christmas lights up, which is slightly alarming. Today's the 1st of November. It feels a bit early for me. This was obviously a pub at one time here on Chigwell Road before it came Melin. Looks very flash, that's for sure. There you go, we can see it was called the White Heart. intriguing building here beside the road. Looks like it's got some stories to tell. So we've arrived in Chigwell, Essex. We're crossing the border out of London at this point. And of course, any border crossing should be marked with a pub the Three Jolly Wheelers. What's that like? Any of you know this pub? So it's really got dark straight away at sunset. It's now 4.40, 20 to 5, sunset time. And you can see, look, because of the heavy cloud, the gloomy weather, it's got really dark. It's a shame because I had wanted to maybe go through this nature reserve behind me here, which isn't in a video and it's a really lovely area. I stumbled across it one day when I came up to the, uh, the school uniform shop back there at Woodward Bridge and I went for a little bit of a walk and I went down through this nature reserve. Although it's not been a particularly long walk, although it's not over yet, <laughs> these are the kind of walks that often personally I regard as minor classics. It's kind of walking into the darkness to a, a little settlement just outside the edge of London. Cheek as well, or Chig as well. And you can, you feel this idea of this place as a kind of medicinal, magical place. It's got a very special feel to it. it would have been very grand in its day, in the 18th century, when the medicinal springs were very popular. There were a lot around London. But then there were these resorts just outside of London, and this would have been one of them. It's a shame we won't get to enjoy the magnificent views, but what means we'll have to come back and continue this walk, right? We've got to at least see the, uh, the famous the Oldie King's Head, for example. Wow, quite a long wait for the, <laughs> the next tube, 12 minutes. Well, thank you for joining me on that walk from Wanstead to Chigwell, a kind of classic Edgelands walk, if you like. Not exactly uh, an epic in terms of distance, but in terms of, in terms of the themes that we collected along the way, the resonances that echo down through time. I really enjoyed that walk, I hope you did too. So, as I ever like to say, I look forward to seeing you on the next walk, wherever that may be. And uh, just remember, take care of yourselves. Brighter days are just up ahead. <laughs>